Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to the uh, Mobile People Community event. Uh, my name is Volodya. I am Android team leader at EPAM. And today we have like collaboration with another community from Ukraine Emerging Technology. And our event, uh, it will be about uh, IOS topic. It uh, will be um, about composable architecture. Yeah, um, our speaker is Dmetro, so let's invite him. Dmetro, Hi, hello. Hi. Yeah, so please tell us a few words about yourself and about this interesting topic. Okay, and firstly, do you hear me well, right? Yeah, yeah, seems everything okay. is fine. Okay. Uh, so, hi everyone, my name is Dmitry Barabash and I work as a IOS engineer uh, seven years probably. For the recent three years I worked mostly with MVVM and probably it's already almost one year since when I started actively using the composable architecture. So today I'd like to talk the, about the composable architecture and this presentation will focus on the most basic terms, mainly to give everyone general idea about TCA and show its advantages. But also I will describe some of the issues I faced with for the last few months to show a few of uh, downsides. And this presentation could be quite fast and informative. So all the questions I will answer during Q and session. So yeah. yeah okay. Start. Okay. Great. Great. Uh, yeah. I'm adding your presentation and let's move on. Okay. So our agenda for today will be history, bidirectional and unidirectional flow, TCA components, flow, ownership and examples, store, reducer and effects, then network request example, dependency, navigation, recommendation and summary, and later we'll have uh, some small Q&A session. So let's start from the history. Uh, there are two main authors of this architecture in iOS community, Stefan Sellis and Brandon Williams. And for the last six years, as I see, they presented many functional topics for the iOS community, and some of them are available on YouTube now. Uh, Swift UI uh, was released in 2019, uh, which gave us declarative way of UI creation in iOS. And since then, a stateful architecture was not clearly specified, and I think unidirectional architectures become more and more popular. The first TCA version uh, 0.0 point zero was released on January January 9 2020 and currently the latest TCA version is 0520 released on March 8 2023 so uh, it's already more than three years of TCA so uh, bidirectional and unidirectional flow uh, unidirectional flow it's a pattern of applying one way commutation uh, on an immutable data state uh, the system is described as stateful if it's uh, designed uh, to remember processing events or user interactions. The remembered information is called the state of the system. Uh, state, it's a view state at the concrete time, including navigation logic or child action. So as you can see from the diagram, the main difference between two flows is that in bidirectional flow, we can communicate in two ways between two different components. And in unidirectional flow, we can only send or receive something uh, from some other component. Next is the TCA components. TCA components shows us what components consist of TCA. The main components in TCA is a store, which contains at least some state and action. Also store may represent this part to the view and this represented component of a store has a name view store. Also, you have a reducer and environment, which now is dependency. Important here, this diagram doesn't show ownership. It's about the visibility of each component only. And next, TCA flow. Uh, the TCA flow diagram shows us unidirectional flow in action. We create a view and ideally that only this view may generate new action which comes to the reducer, which is actually business logic in our flow. The reducer can either generate new action later through the effect or mutate our state. Effects, it's uh, encapsulated scope of some action with some logic. 
uh, important here to remember from this diagram that store is running the reducer and reducer is transforming our state, which is source of trust here. Uh, TCA ownership. Uh, TCA ownership diagram represents how components own each other. The main two components uh, here are store and view. Store mainly contains uh, state and action and it represents this part to the view. Reducer contains mutable state and mutable action. Reducer generate new state and new effects and effects may generate new action. Also, uh, we may have dependency here, which was part of the store on uh, the previous TCA version, but now it may live fully isolated from a store and uh, we'll show it I, and I will show it later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's start from some simple examples. Uh, let's imagine we have such a simple view with only two states. Uh, each state have some text, color, and may or may not have some image. So in such case, our state is a struct which has a title and some style. And uh, style is an enum with two cases, active and an active case. Uh, also, I've added a convenience function which uh, toggle a state here. Also, we have content which represent color and image for a style. The view have only one top action in this example. And uh, this is how view will look like. It's very simple, trivial uh, Swift UI view containing a vertical stack with a text, image, and color. Important here that view contains a store and body uh, is updated through view with store structure, which is defined how often our view is redrawn. Also important here is that we access state's property through view store closure. And uh, from this place, mostly we send actions to the store as well. Uh, for example, on the screen, you may see how I get title and uh, send on top action. This is a reducer uh, which receives all of the actions from a store. For example, in this case, I receive top action and mutate a state through a previously created toggle action. To show you basic example of environment, let's assume uh, we should track on a peer action and send to the analytics service. For this, I created analytics protocol and environment, uh, which takes this as a parameter. Later, um, you create a live and mock implementation if you need this. Yeah, just a moment, yeah. And also, uh, we should add on a peer action send and send it from a view and handle uh, it uh, in reducer where I call environment analytics track on a peer. Yeah, basically here that's it. Uh, store. Uh, store, generally speaking, is an object you will pass around the views uh, that need to interact with an application. Basically, store is responsible for state mutation and it's not uh, thread safe, so all interaction with it must be done on the same thread the store was created on. For example, if the store is powering a Swift UI or UI kit view, then all interaction must be done on the main thread. Stores are not thread safe because when an action is sent to a store, a reducer is run on a current state and this process cannot be done from multiple threads. It is possibly to make this process thread safe by introducing logs or queues, but this introduces new complications. Uh, for example, the first one, if you use dispatch queue main async, when you're already on the main thread, it will uncure a thread hop. This can lead to unexpected behavior in UI kit and Swift UI, where sometimes you are required to do some work synchronously, such as in animation block. Uh, secondly, it is possible uh, to create a schedule that performs its work immediately when on the main thread and otherwise uses dispatch queue main async. Uh, view store, it's a scope part of a scope of a store uh, that represent only constant state and input action uh, to a view. The main purpose of view store is uh, to avoid multiple Swift UI redrawings when sometimes changes uh, not only in our state. It may happen because we use a observable object for the whole view. 
So uh, we create a separate observable object view uh, state uh, where I remove duplicates. More information uh, you may check in the TCA video course in block adaptation. Also, view store supports dynamic member lookup, so we may skip writing state inside uh, with view store structure. Action parameter is optional and uses uh, param uh, parent action by default. Uh, yeah. Next, a reducer describes how to involve uh, the current state of the application to the next state, given an action and describes what effect task should be executed later by the store, if any. Reducer has such a name because it reduces uh, the same as a native high order functions uh, which aim to take a function and return a function. So logic could be transformed. Uh, reducers Ammonoids and Brandon Williams proved it with his speech on functional Swift YouTube channel. Uh, the main idea is to reduce side effects and make your function uh, or reducer poor. So you basically fire something and forget, but the effects could, be, um, could return an optional action into the store and it is known as unidirectional flow. Uh, important here is that multi-threading bugs are not a responsibility of TCA. It's rather the responsibility of Swift and a developer. Currently, any reducer is self-deprecated. We can have in one screen as many reducers as we wanted to, and it means we may enough separate our business logic. Uh, pullback transforms uh, a reducer that works on a child state action and environment into one that works on parent state action and environment. It accomplishes uh, this by providing three uh, transformation to the method. So pullback basically helps us to convert uh, local to global state reducer and vice versa. On the latest TCA version, pullback is replaced and I will present this in future slides. Uh, pullback works through closure or key pass for environment and state. For action, there is a case pass extracting embedding a piece of child state action from the parent state action, which is typically a num or structure. Case pass, uh, it's another library from, uh, from points three that allow us uh, to work with a num, uh, the same as key pass works with a structure. Imagine our task is to create a parent view with two child views. Uh, the left one should remove last character in title by single tap and the right one should generate new random color uh, by double tap. For the left uh, feature one, I created state with uh, a title and button text where only um, a title is mutable. Also, I have only one uh, button tap action for this. A reducer in a child will only remove last character in title on top action and return none, which means no further action. View one uh, is uh, pretty similar to the view I showed a few slides ago. So let's not focus on it right now. Uh, child feature two is similar to the first one, except that it generates random color in reducer and send double tap action from a view. A uh, parent feature state contains uh, two child states and two child action as well. So it means that parent can mutate any nested child and receive any nested, nested child actions, uh, which is actually a delegate in TCA. To get a reducer from a child and connect to a parent, we use a pullback. And when combine uh, all of our child's and main parent reducer, uh, into a single one. Um, yeah, just a moment. And finally, uh, to display child uh, view on a parent view, we create a child view inside the parent and pass to init a store, scoping from a, pile, a parent child state. Uh, in scope, we specify child state from a parent through key pass or closure and uh, child action from parent through closure or parent action. So we use scope to transform parent into child state and action. It is only needed when we have nested uh, TCA view. Important about uh, view restore parameters. 
Uh, we may use observe if we need to avoid useless redrawing in our view and observe only some parts of parent state. So you specify what part of your parent state you need to and uh, what changes updates your view. By default, it uses state of your store. Uh, also, this feature allows you to make uh, sta state and action more modular. Also, you can see here um, a parameter remove duplicates, which, which also helps you helps you to override uh, logic how you can uh, observe changes and you can specify it manually. But now, for example, I passed uh, equal uh, equitability uh, default uh, publishers remove duplicates uh, operator. Yeah. Next, um, let's imagine in our feature one. Uh, that our feature one is optional. So for this, we mark a pullback and state as optional too. Also, we need to mark a store as optional in our view. Important here, use if let store and other building TCA features instead of manually checking if let because likely you may face with a crash because state closure will be called in scope um, and maybe this bug will be fixed soon. Uh, let's imagine uh, we have a parent uh, which have uh, only one child at the same time and no more information from a state. For example, uh, when we create a tab views. In such cases, we may use enum instead of structure for your state. For the pullback, we need to use case pass uh, for state and action. And in view, we need to add switch store and case led, case led uh, that switch between scoped stores and select only one. Also, you have, a you know, for example, like another case, uh, production case, if you have array, uh, then you should specify uh, for each store function from TCA library as well to avoid uh, possible crashes. Uh, next, uh, imagine we have simple uh, state and environment with only one property. So such cases we may simplify. So in such case, uh, we may simplify with type alias, which is a nice lightweight choice here. Also, if you don't need a state uh, and only send action, then probably you may simplify it uh, also uh, with a view store structure. Uh, next, reducer. Uh, reducer protocol is an updated API for the previous reducer, but old style uh, reducer now is renamed to any reducer and currently is so deprecated. But mainly, reducer protocol is not about the name, it's actually improved the performance and ergonomics. What's new here? We have the domain which, uh, with state and action, uh, logic and behavior for your feature. There are two ways to define a reducer in function or in body property, which combines one or more reducers. If you conform both, then only function will be called. But you may also use both of variants calling function from the body. So uh, let's rewrite the previous example. Now we create a reducer. We need to create a domain first and conform to reducer protocol. For this example, we have uh, only one reducer and we use a uh, function. Also now we can, uh, we have updated API of effect task, but I show the details in next slides. Uh, we use body if we have uh, other nested reducers. As you may, may notice, we don't have uh, to write pullback anymore and optional reducer uh, should use new if let API as well. Next, uh, yeah, next is effects. Uh, effect is a type that encapsulate a unit of work that can be run in the outside world and can feed actions back to the store. Effects are the perfect place to do side effects such as network requests, saving loading data from disk, creating timers, interacting with dependencies and more. Uh, there are, uh, they are returned from reducers so that the store can perform the effect after the reducer is done running. Uh, there are two ways to create an effect. 
uh, one using Swift's native concurrency tool and the other using Apple combined framework. Uh, using Swift's native uh, structured concurrency tool, uh, there are three main ways to create an effect, depending on if you want to omit one single action back into the system or any number of action or just uh, execute some work without emitting any actions. Uh, three main ways uh, to create an effect using Swift are find, forget, task, and run. Uh, but let's take a look uh, for some basic examples with each of them. Uh, we use find, forget when we return some work using simple escaping behavior. For example, we need to tell in our legacy code that button pressed from TCA feature through a callback. Uh, we use task when we have only one time consuming work and run. It is similar to a task, but we may use it for many time consuming tasks and each of them uh, return back to the reducer. Also important to remember if you are, um, uh, if you're using uh, Swift's concurrency tool and the task run and find forget functions on effect task, then threading is automatically handled for you. Two more types we have here are future and result. Future uh, creates an effect that can supply a single value asynchronously in future. Note that you can only del deliver a single value to the callback. If you send more, they will be discarded. Result initializes an effect that lazily executes some work and synchronously send data uh, back to the store. Um, TC is part of the combine, so all of the side effects are run over publishers, uh, futures, and other combined concepts. As far as we are limited out of time, so I wouldn't cover combined concepts in this presentation, but they are covered in points three TC course. So let's assume effect is a combined publisher now, and we can work with effect as a publisher. Effect is a lazy publisher, which is a deferred publisher under the hood, so it starts running after the subscription. But in general, it is possible to have a RIGS and a reactive Cocoa implementation, or you could make your own implementation as well. A reducer should return an effect, so if we work with a publisher, then we have to call erase to any effect. Similar behavior with erase to any publisher, which converts some publisher to any publisher. So anytime we transform a publisher with uh, any of the publisher's operations, map, zip, flat map, etc., uh, we get a non-effect value and need to wrap it into the effect. This actually is a limitation of Swift type system because it's impossible during the compile time to convert complex wrap type to the concrete type. Um, so we could only return something that conform a publisher type. Uh, for this purpose, we use type erasure in Swift. Uh, basically, it helps us to avoid strange types when we use publisher methods. Uh, a similar approach we use in Swift UI is uh, through type erasure, for example, any view. Also, it fixes a problem when using uh, the publisher's functions, Swift doesn't allow us to get the needed type at the compile time. The difference between arise to effect and catch to effect that uh, catch to effect uh, never fails. So uh, what's new with, in, with a new effect API? Uh, effect now is a effect publisher and effect with two parameters, action and never, uh, now is replaced with effect task with only one parameter action. Also, uh, we can have composing effects like merge, concatenate, etc. And there is an unimplemented type that allows us to stop some implementation. It works through find, forget, xcode test, fail. Uh, next, uh, let's imagine we need to load some image from URL and display it. So in this case, uh, we add two states loading and loaded uh, with an image. Our state will have optional image and error text. And I added three actions here only to simplify this example. Also, I mark state and action with equitable protocol. So uh, for the state, it's required because 
through this mechanism, uh, we define when state has changed and view needed to be redrawn. In action, it's not required until we start using uh, exhaustive uh, tests uh, with TCA. But in this presentation, I will not focus on it. Uh, in the environment, I have a queue on which I receive a result and effect publisher for image loading. Also, I added two custom images uh, for different error types. Next uh, is random image. Uh, random image, it's a future which run a task with URL session and complete a result from it. In reducer, assimilate a uh, button press on a peer to start image loading only. Uh, the most interesting part in this example, uh, in this block, where we call our future and map to result. I added delay uh, to this example uh, to simulate longer image loading with a delay to show a spinner on UI only. Uh, receive, we use to specify a queue on which result will be received. We should all always uh, remember that working with uh, a publisher, we should map the effect uh, and return the effect. So for this purpose, I used here a catch uh, to effect. Uh, to receive a result in TCA, I needed to map a received effect to existing action in our feature domain. I used cancelable here to show how you can handle cases uh, when, for example, user can press on a button many times and we need to handle only one requ request at the same time. For this purpose, I used uh, cancel on flight. Also, it needed to have some uh, hashable ID to specify uh, what should be canceled. And finally, I map success response data to image and failed response uh, error to some text. Next uh, is environment, uh, which has now replaced with the dependency. So another change has come with the reducer protocol is a dependency. Previously, we passed uh, in an environment which is not ideal since store doesn't carry one, so you end up having to create another system to be able to access. So now dependency live in our domain through dependency property wrapper. And rewriting the previous network request example, we move main queue to the separate dependency and in network client, we have only one effect publisher now. To access network client key in dependency, we need to extend dependency values and set up getter and center uh, setter for the key. Also, we need to confirm dependency key from our dependency. Uh, so now it's network client. Uh, here we specify a live implementation. It's mandatory for now. Also, we may confirm test dependency key if we need to have test implementation. For this case, I used unimplemented to stop the data mock. And uh, there is some other existing uh, dependencies in TCA, like data, UID, calendar, time zone, URL session, etc. So you don't have to write your custom dependencies in such cases. Probably this list is not final yet, so check existing dependencies before you start implementing a new one. Uh, navigation. When I were preparing for the presentation, I plan to say that uh, currently no building navigation and only custom variants from other developers like you can see from this slide. But since February 27, TCA has released navigation in beta in separate branch. And what changes we have now? Firstly, we have a presentation state property wrapper which needed for modeling a features domain that needed to, to present a child feature. For example, as you can see from the example, reducer protocol uses if let with presentation state wrapper. Secondly, we have presentation action, uh, which currently supports two types of action, dismiss and your custom action. 
Uh, also, now we need to mark our key path in scope and reduce service dollar sign because we use a new property wrapper. I think uh, it's good that TCA have some specific type of navigation, but I think uh, that maybe it could be a better way to organize this. For example, to have a separate dependency in feature domain that could be tested separately from view state and action. Uh, but now there is still a good technique presented by Krzysztof Zablotsky in his uh, presentation about boundaries. The idea is that you should specify your boundary through the protocol in state and action. Implementation of this protocol set up your feature boundaries, and in such a way you may specify boundaries for navigation state and action. Also, you may specify a similar interface in your view to follow some specific parts of your feature, for example, only view state and view action in your view whenever you create a new view for your domain. As you can see from the previous example, uh, boundaries are not strictly specified yet from TCA library. So when a new iOS developer faced with uh, TCA first time, then he possibly may uh, have a bug by adding, for example, navigation child state into parent and observing the whole parent state on a view. And as a result, navigation, navigated state will redraw a child state and your child nested uh, view may glare at some time uh, as an example. And another mix and navigation title for SwiftUI and UI kit could have unexpected behavior as well. Also, I faced with some strange bugs in some specific iOS versions, but this issue happened to me when I mixed navigation in legacy UI kit uh, and start mixing it with navigation in SwiftUI. Maybe if you have complex but clear SwiftUI only navigation, then such bugs will not appear. Uh, recommendation before combining with legacy, if you will. Uh, firstly, clean up your code. Uh, for example, move in separate packages, analytics, network, etc., to allow you to import this dependency clearly in UTCA a uh, feature through dependency uh, property wrapper. Uh, create a separate shared model, for example, common UI, styles, etc., where you put all of the reusable components. Uh, try to avoid massive features. I mean, one screen equal one or more domains. This allows you to easily, easily replace thumbsin, test, and scale. Specify a template with uh, feature boundaries protocols that generates a feature namespace domain. For example, as I showed you on the previous slide, how I create feature state protocol and feature action protocol. Also, you can create similar protocols for your views that will always observe your state instead of the whole state and send only view action instead of the domain action. Additionally, you may create a template for strictly specified feature creation. I mean, Xcode template, uh, but also you can create uh, and set up similar templates with Twist uh, or some other tools. Maybe the template idea may appear after the major release in TCA as well. Uh, test your first features uh, on small screens without complex navigation. For example, my first TCA on current legacy project was uh, a simple pop-up. Don't mix navigation with your legacy. Uh, leave it in your legacy code until you fully migrate or even leave as is. Uh, don't use SwiftUI methods if there is convenience method in TCA. For example, I faced with a crash using for each instead of for each store uh, due to the binding bug in SwiftUI. Or use if led from TCA instead of native uh, Swift if led because uh, on latest builds, this box still exists. Uh, use send uh, with some animation when you need this, because by default, you wouldn't have uh, any animations uh, with send method. If you decide to create a view, uh, don't be generic independent uh, from TCA architecture, because most likely one day you need to use them uh, with TCA functions, and you may start using TCA methods instead, and it will be a spike or a crash. So to fix these bugs, you would need to use TCA methods, which is impossible uh, if, you, if your view is generic from TCA. And uh, how to connect TCA with your legacy code? 
For example, if you have a basic flow without additional input to your TCA feature and output, for example, uh, callback actions, then you simply wrap your TCA plus, uh, for example, Swift UI feature in host and your controller and present in your view. If you additionally need to have some output, uh, then you may define a callback in your feature environment and convert uh, in reducer this callback uh, to fire and forget effect. And if you additionally need input to your uh, TCA feature, then you can create uh, some additional layer between your old code uh, and new feature where store will be located and then send action through this additional layer. Uh, yes, I think that it's a spying, but as far as I know, uh, there is no out of the box handlers for such things from TCA now. Maybe in future store will have extension uh, for some input and output, but now uh, you should handle it manually. Uh, so yeah, summary. Uh, TCA is probably the most growing unidirectional public architecture nowadays in Swift. It uses declarative principles and try to solve next problems. Shane Drew states, control our mutation in a consistent manner, uh, make the app composable, control side effects, and easy to test with uh, uh, a very easy setup. So I highlighted the next advantages from TCA. Single encapsulated state and unidirectional flow, scalability, uh, crash recording, which means we may record a concrete state at any time, a remote control, for example, for Mac OS, where we have multiple process up, it is easy to implement a control over child process in your app, which has also unidirectional architecture. State restoration, for example, you close an app, then open with saved, saved state and transition and so on. Of course, if it's uh, serializable and deserializable uh, easily. Uh, separate of business logic from side effects, ergonomics, uh, I mean, functional and, and imperative, plus you use the functional uh, building techniques with your architecture, for example, reduce, combine, merge, etc. Uh, consistent because in other architectures, you can do whatever you want. Testability plus plus, uh, which means for me a great testability. You just need uh, to mock a store. And also, um, it is easy to write integration test as well. Uh, community. Uh, if there is something critical now, they have often releases, plus uh, active community on GitHub supports it as well. Uh, they have more than 8,000 stars now, more than 1,000 forks, a low rate of issues and PRs, instant response uh, for new issues, and so on. And uh, for example, uh, recently, I found a bug using Swift UI binding uh, that, uh, that the library used. So I created a PR and it took me, as I remember, only six hours from the creation to merge of my PR. And uh, good documentation. Uh, I mean, uh, a lot of, they have a lot of videos on points free portal and it's like a great bonus. Uh, possibility to measure performance. Uh, for example, Krzysztof Zablotsky on his uh, last presentation showed how he measure architecture parts, performance and detect things to improve, which is really hard in other architectures. Also, I still uh, see the next drawbacks. Major release is not finished yet, uh, but pre-released 1.0 is ready to test. Routing is currently developing and has a nice progress, but not finalized yet. Is it to have massive state and as a result, you may have missed encapsulation and observe useless information in your view, which as a result may lead to frequent updates on UI due to a single observable so source of trust uh, that are a necessary burden, which means you may stuck with high memory usage due to that single source of trust. Uh, you may have, after some time, massive reducer easily. Uh, similar, it's easy to have massive state with the navigation UI and environment variable, uh, which is possible to fix with additional protocols. Uh, as I mentioned before, Krzysztof Zablotsky showed uh, in his speech previously. Uh, and additionally, in your uh, project, you need to, uh, like, it's like additional dependency you need to maintain in your project. Uh, before, 
the major release, it's not so easy because releases may happen more often than we expect. Or as a result, sometimes we may uh, face a hard deprecation part in a, min in a minor updates. Uh, and also, I'd like to point here a bug faced uh, in some rare cases. Uh, it's Xcode bug and happened to me if you test different versions of TCA in some of your uh, projects. And at some point of time, uh, my app crashed uh, from the TCA function. But this bug fixes if I downgrade TCA version and then change it back. I haven't yet researched deeply root of this problem, but it seems like Xcode doesn't work well uh, still with uh, SPM cache and, and tools like uh, to ease Xcode GAN or something else uh, may solve this problem right now. So to finalize all of the pros and cons, I think TCA is good for fast growing and scaling product where developers mostly have at least middle strong level and ready to face with some new challenges. Also, it's a good choice when you have small sub teams and everyone often has a separate feature to develop. In such a way, you may have separated and well-tested features. Additionally, TCA helps us to write, uh, to write integration tests, which is a good benefit often, and we may restore a state uh, in some uh, specific cases as well. Also, TCA could not be good, uh, on my opinion, for a project where stability is requirement number one, because there is still no major release yet, uh, where you have a large mixed team and work between your teams are not strictly specified. Additionally, I think when you have uh, too many legacy and we need to support old iOS versions, then probably TCA uh, could not be uh, uh, the best choice as well. Uh, so basically that's it at this uh yeah and if this topic seems uh, to be interesting for for you so please let me know and probably i could present some other tca topics in future like tests debug etc and this is one of the final slides about resources i mostly use only points free uh, web source and sometimes I discover uh, different uh, developers like Krzysztof Zablotsky. Uh, so that's why I attached uh, the last URL from his website. And yeah, many credits to authors of this uh, architecture, Stefan Salis and Brandon Williams. And I think, yeah, we have enough time for a Q&A session if you have some questions. Yes. First of all, thanks, Dmitro, for interesting presentation. Yeah, it uh, for me it's uh, interesting also from another point because I'm like initially from Android world, and uh, when I saw the name of the topic, so composable architecture, it sounds pretty similar, you know, to another one framework we have in Android, uh, not architecture actually, like Android Swift UI. Do you know this? <laughs> Jetpack Compose, yeah, so it's like, sounds pretty similar. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the topic itself, I think we have um, similar talk about MVI architecture and actually Google also push for now UDF architecture. Yeah, so this topic, I think um, very actual for both uh, Android and, and iOS for sure. Uh, so maybe question, you mentioned it's still not in release. Uh, and I think it could be like a red flag for, <laughs> for, <laughs> for many people, uh, at least maybe for production uh, code. So is there any forecast uh, when, when it should be like official release it? Uh, it has already pre-release -re pre branch, so I know like how long it will take. As I understand, uh, they try to force this, re this release as soon as possible. So maybe in a few weeks, they will have uh, this major release yet. So um, I hope so. So our our talk is pre pretty actual here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if if in, in two weeks there will be release, then it sounds great. Uh, okay. And you use it currently uh, uh, at your project. Uh, am I correct? 
Yeah, uh, firstly, I started uh, to test with some small uh, features how it works. And when I uh, get a big redesign feature, I discussed with the team, uh, with the product and the project manager uh, that we somehow separate our old logic because it was it was not impossible to test. So we decided to start writing a new redesign with this architecture. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's... It's always cool if uh, when product people understand some uh, requirements from their side. Oh, since we have some question. Yeah, I see. Okay. Uh, yes, since you used to say in production, how complex and big is uh, the state of the app you work with? Did you have any issues with keeping the whole state in memory with memory consumption or performance? Oh, interesting point. Uh, saying about uh, states, I don't think it's a big problem because uh, like I have uh, not so big but not so small uh, feature with uh, maybe uh, five, seven nested uh, views like navigation uh, logic and uh, uh, at this time uh, I should uh, like our parent should convince all of the nested. So uh, in such case, uh, it could uh, be like a potential problem, but it's not because mostly it's a rare case and you often mark as optional and uh, they need your states when you don't need it. But uh, more uh, real case problem is when you create a scope often. And uh, I've uh, seen uh, a presentation from uh, Krzysztof Zablotsky and he presented that um, like creating and like different uh, part of TCA is not as big problem as creating a scope. So uh, probably if you will have a lot of nested uh, features, you may face uh, with performance issue with a scope. But as I see, uh, probably in a few releases, this bug will also be fixed because this uh, Krzysztof Zablotsky already communicate with uh, uh, this architecture and they try to solve some of the points he presented previously. And yeah, moving back to your question, uh, states, uh, it's not so big problem because it's a structure, it's not a reference and uh, it's not, it's like a lightweight, even if you have a lot of nested uh, states inside. Mm -hmm. Thanks yeah, for I answer the question. Yeah. There, there, there was was several questions actually in this one, but yeah, since you, uh, you covered uh, all of them. Okay, so guys, if uh, there nothing more, yes, yeah, thanks for the presentation. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's I think uh, let's then finish. Thank you again. Oh, yes, thank um, you. Let's open the final slide uh, to remind uh, about the filling form, which is uh, right now very important uh, for future uh, presentations. So just a moment, let me uh, move it. Uh, we have a feedback form, uh, which now have only three required uh, questions. And it's quite important for community development. So don't hesitate and uh, answer and uh, leave a feedback here uh, with this link. And if you will have access, uh, also you may leave a badge, uh, which also will impact this uh, presentation for some possible future events as well. Yeah, and will motiv your, your badges and comments will motivate speaker and co community at all. <laughs> yeah, Create right. a more such interesting topic in the future. Yeah, yeah, guys. So please put, put your likes, put your stars in at the uh, VIA community. Uh, I can, I think I can drop the, the link here. And that's all. Okay. Thanks again, Metro. Thanks everyone for joining us and see you later at our future events. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.